Premiere Pro 24 update is now available. Let's jump in to explore all of the new updates. Also, just a general good practice before you update, make sure that you finish the existing projects that you're working on before you update to a new version. And you can do that just by going to your preferences and your media preferences and clearing out all of your cache files. Don't worry, it's not gonna delete any of your actual media files. These are just kind of filler files that Premiere Pro generates for each project and they're disposable. So once you do that, then you can update. So with this new update, Premiere Pro has been saying that it is five times faster. That means that overall, it's a more efficient experience. So when you're clicking around, dragging media into the timeline, you're going to experience just an overall faster Premiere Pro interface. Now, I have particularly have noticed the speed changes in Lumetri Color. So if I'm using any of the curves, for example, the Luma curve, making adjustments, and I have the scopes open, those changes are more quickly reflected in the scopes than in previous versions. Same with the hue saturation curves. Make any changes there and it's reflected. I also noticed a significant speed increase when I'm creating any types of mask on the footage and animating those masks. Everything just feels a lot more fluid. So overall, I would say that Premiere Pro is saying the truth when they say it's five times faster. Now I didn't compare exactly between 23 and 24, but you do get this feeling while you're using it that like, oh, like something is smoother here. So let me know when you update, if you feel like you're getting a smoother experience, just leave a comment below. The next update is text-based editing, replace all. So here I have this sample clip in my timeline and I've already generated a transcript using the text panel. If I go up to search and I want to replace a word, for example, in this transcript, toolkit is spelled as two separate words. If I want it to be one word, I can go to search and I can replace and replace all with the toolkit as two separate words, but just as one word. So this comes in a lot of handy if there's a misspelling or something that you want to change for multiple instances throughout your long transcript. Another thing that's currently in beta that is not available yet in version 24 is filler word removal. So that means uh and ums. It can auto remove all of those with one click. So I know that a lot of you are excited about that and you've been using plugins to achieve that, but soon, hopefully sooner than later, it'll be inside of the next update in Premiere Pro. Another update is the AI audio-based tagging. So when you use the Essential Sound Panel, previously you would have to go and select a group of clips and then do it manually to tag those all as dialogue. Select the next group of clips and auto-tag those as music, for example, because that's the way that the Essential Sound Panel works is by defining what types of audio are in your timeline so that way you can mix it. So now with this new AI features, you can just have Premiere Pro automatically detect which clips in your timeline are dialogue, which ones are ambience, which ones are music, which ones are sound effects, and so on. So this is just, again, eliminating those extra steps that you have to do so you can get to the creative part faster. Another update related to audio is the new enhanced speech that is inside of the Essential Sound Panel. Now it still has a little bit more work to do, so it's still in beta, it's not yet in version 24, but if you just open up the beta app, you can test it out for yourself. And here inside of my timeline, I have a clip that is very echoey. Let me play it back. I'm so excited to announce that the After Effects Toolkit is now here. And now what we can do is select this clip and click on Enhance Speech. And it will just start to analyze the clip and improve the sound without having to use any type of plugin such as a reverb remover. All right, let's play it back. I'm so excited to announce that the After Effects Toolkit is now here. So you can now use the Premiere Gal Toolkit inside of After Effects. So I think this is going to come in a ton of handy when you're dealing with multiple mic sources. Let's say in a podcast, somebody has a very noisy environment, you wanna clean up their audio, you can use this enhanced audio. And this is very similar to what Adobe Podcast was using in that web browser version that I was talking about in several videos ago. Also, when the Adobe team demoed this for me, they actually use a sample clip of a recording where it was just the on-camera mic. They demoed this and let's show you the result. Evangelist, and my role is to have a for 
it sounds terrible. So I'm just going to enhance it. I am Esteban Toro. I am an Adobe evangelist. And my role is to advocate for all of you. I've been waiting for this to come to Essential Sound for many, many years now. And I think you're going to love it. And if this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe. And if you're new here, I post weekly videos about video editing and production just to help you become a better creator. And talking about new things, I started using a new music licensing platform called Track Club, who is the sponsor of today's video. Now, I know that there are a ton of music licensing platforms, and the reason I like Track Club is for three reasons. Number one, it doesn't have a bloated catalog, so it's easy to find what you need fast. All of the songs are super high quality and highly curated by their specialist team. After all, better is always better than more. Number two, their music is customizable. And what I mean by that is not only can you download the full track and download all the musical stems, but you can also use their customizable tool called MixLab to turn off the drums, for example. And then you can download it and use it in your music track. And number three, for those of you that publish to YouTube, it has automatic clearing. So you can link up your YouTube channel ID with your Track Club account and everything is cleared automatically and you don't have to worry about any copyright strikes. There are both individual and business plans available with Track Club and you can use my link below to get two months free. So a two month trial to try it out for your own videos and monetize at the same time. Thanks so much to Track Club for sponsoring today's video and now let's get more into the updates. So over the past year or so, I've noticed that the Premiere Pro team has really put a lot of effort into making Premiere Pro more stable. And that means less crashes, right? And this year especially, I've rarely had any crashes, but in the off case that a crash does happen, the team has implemented a new recovery mode. So if it crashes, when you open up back Premiere Pro, you'll see a little red notice at the bottom. Premiere Pro quit unexpectedly while a project was open. And next to that, there's a little reopen icon and it will reopen those projects in the current state that it was when it unexpectedly quit and will automatically save it as the current project file. You know how in Photoshop, the recovery there is just super smooth and it always works? Well, let's hope going forward that this will fix any issues that you might have with recovering projects that unexpectedly quit. And a good rule of thumb is to have your auto save on to about every three minutes or so. And this now happens in the background so you don't have that annoying pop-up that says that Premiere Pro is auto saving. So when you go into the export workspace, you'll notice on the left that there's another social media platform that you can publish to right away, and that is TikTok. And the Adobe Premiere Pro team so that they work closely with TikTok to make sure when you publish directly from Premiere to TikTok that the same views would happen if you upload native in app. And lastly, another thing that isn't necessarily new, it's been around in beta for the past six months or so, is generative fill in collaboration with Photoshop. So for example, if you wanna edit a vertical version of your video, what I've done here is I've exported this snippet of this video as a test MP4. And with Photoshop, you can actually open up an MP4 file and Photoshop has a video mode. And what you can do is you can use the crop tool to expand your frame so it can generate a new background above or below to create that vertical space. So above, I just hit generate without typing anything in, we'll create more wall space. And down below, I can generate, for example, a table that will cover up my hands because we don't wanna generate the bottom half of my body because that can produce some pretty strange results. So then you have these new generated layers and you can extend those layers out to meet the duration of that video clip and then you can resave that video and then bring it back in Premiere Pro and do some editing. So this is great if you work with landscape primarily and you wanna be able to export it and use it on TikTok or Instagram and you don't have to have such a zoomed in uh, cropped frame on your face just showing this inside of the nine by 16 vertical frame. Instead, you have more space to work with so it doesn't feel so close up on the social media platform. I know that I would love to see the generative fill built in directly in Premiere Pro so we don't have to go to Photoshop, but for now, I recommend just exporting that whole video clip without any of the text or the sound or anything, just that raw clip as an MP4 and then opening it up 
in Photoshop and doing that generative fill to the new cropped area. There are a few more other updates that are a little bit more minor, but maybe you're interested in reading them. I'll put a direct link to all of the new updates just down below in my description box. And let me know what you think. What do you guys think of these new updates? Let me know in a comment below. And if you want to check out the new Roto Brush, the next gen Roto Brush instead of After Effects, you can check out this new video I made right over here. And don't forget to subscribe. You can just click on my profile image right there. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye.